Welcome to the Lisp Portable XR video tutorial series. My name is Chuck Potsmith. In this video I will walk you through the steps required to make measurements using the touchscreen controls of the Lisp Portable XR. Okay, let's jump right in. To get started we must first power up the instrument by pressing the power button in the upper right corner. After a few seconds the set operator and SOP screen will be displayed. This is where we select which operator will be making the measurements and which standard operating procedure will be used to make the measurements. We will cover the details of setting up the operators and SOP in a separate video. Pressing the change button will allow you to select a different operator or an SOP. Knowing who has performed the measurements can be useful when reviewing the results later on and using the same standard operating procedure every time will keep the measurements as consistent as possible. Different SOPs can be created for different applications or types of particles. Both the operator and SOP details are stored with the measurement. After selecting the operator and SOP, press the next button to take you to the main menu. As the name suggests, the main menu is the starting point for most operations. Most screens have a Sequoia button in the lower left corner. Pressing this button will bring you back to the main menu, exiting the current process, essentially acting as an escape or cancel button. We will cover the other buttons separately, but for now we will click on the measure button to begin the measurement process. As you can see from the title of the first screen, the measurement process is divided in steps that walk the operator through the measurement process. The first step is to rinse the chamber and make sure there is no residual particles from previous measurements in the mixing chamber. While we are rinsing, we have the option to turn on the mixer and the ultrasonics to help clean the chamber. Press on the SOP details button to show a summary of the current standard operating procedure that will be used to make the measurement. Press the next button to continue to the get background step. In order to make a good measurement of the particles suspended in the mixing chamber, we need to make sure the optical windows are free of particles or bubbles. There will always be some light scattering from the window surfaces, and as the instrument is used, the light scattering can increase. So we record this background light scattering first, then subtract it from the total scattering measured with the particles in the chamber. This leaves just the scattering from the particles, which is then used to determine the size distribution. Before making a background measurement, we must first make sure that the water, the mixing chamber, and the optical windows are clean and free of any bubbles. Pressing the update button will start the collection of a background sample. In certain situations, it may be necessary or desirable to not collect a new background before making a measurement. For example, you might want to make a second measurement of a sample without removing it from the mixing chamber. In this case, you could press the skip button to skip the collection of the background and use the previously collected background that is stored in memory. This is not recommended as a standard practice as the background can change over time as particles or bubbles stick to the windows and cause errors in the measurement. The back button will take you back to the previous step, which in this case is the rinsing the chamber. Let's press the update button to move to the next step. Uh oh, we seem to have a problem with the background measurement. The fail icon tells us that the background measurement is not of acceptable quality. In this case, there seems to be some bubbles or dirty water that is causing the failure. If we press on the question mark next to one of the messages, a detailed description of the problem and some suggestions of things to try will be displayed. We'll cover the details of obtaining a good background and evaluating the messages and plots on the screen in a separate video. For now, please note that each warning message will have its own detailed description and a set of suggestions. Pressing the back button will return you to the previous screen where the other messages can be reviewed. If you have done something to improve the background, you can press the repeat button to collect a new background measurement. You can also press the back button to return to the previous steps, including the rinse chamber step. You can also press the next button to accept the failed background and move on to the next step. This is not recommended, but may, re may be required in some situations. For this demonstration, let's assume we have cleaned the chamber and replaced the water, and then press the repeat button. Ah, now that looks better. We now have a good background and we can continue to the next step. Notice the red line and the blue bars and the plots on the left side of the screen? These represent the light scattering in different ranges of angles. On the left are the smallest angles closest to the laser beam, and on the right are the largest angles. 
The blue bars are the current measurement and the red line is the original factory background values. The goal is to get the blue bars as close to the red line as possible. Let's press the next button to continue to the next step. Step 3 is where the particles are introduced into the mixing chamber and prepared before being measured. Depending on the type of sample, this might involve adding particles to the water already in the chamber or replacing the water completely. Before adding the sample, you might want to add a note describing the sample. This note will get saved with the measurement and can be displayed in the output results and in the printable report. After adding the sample, let's press the next button. Before the sample can be measured, we must first make sure that it is fully mixed and the particles are dispersed. The standard operating procedure controls the length of time the ultrasonic probe and mixer are on before the measurement is made. The vertical bar on the left shows the current optical transmission and whether it's within the optimal range. Too many particles or too few particles will cause inaccurate results. The blue pointer should be in the green zone to obtain the most accurate results. The horizontal bar shows the time remaining until the measurement is made. It is possible to configure a standard operating procedure to allow for preparing the sample manually. You can slide the green bars to adjust the ultrasonic power and mixer speed. When you feel you've prepared the sample adequately, you can press the next button to begin the measurement of the sample. The manual mode is only recommended for developing a standard operating procedure. It is highly recommended that an automatic sample preparation be used for the most consistent results from different operators. During the acquire average step, the light scattering from the particles is recorded over the duration set by the SOP. The light scattering is then used to compute the size distribution in step 5. The yellow bar shows the progress. Computing the size distribution takes about 30 seconds. While the size distribution is being computed, the chamber can be prepped for the next measurement. For example, you can open the drain and flush the chamber with clean water. When the computation is complete, one of four screens will appear showing the size distribution results. Which screen is displayed is set by the SOP. One screen that is available is the volume distribution report, which shows the volume concentration in each of the 44 size classes. On the right are the mean size, the total volume concentration, and the optical transmission values. Pressing on the tabs on the top of the screen will bring up the other reports. The cumulative distribution report shows the percent less than plot. Commonly used D values, such as D10, D50, and D90, are shown on the right. The table screen shows the volume concentration and the cumulative distribution report in a table format. The size column is the median size of the size class. The volume concentration column is the concentration in microliters per liter. The cumulative concentration column is the percent less than value for that size. The final option is the stats report, which shows a summary of the details of the sample, including the SOP settings, as well as the mean size, the D50, and other computed values. You can view the different reports by pressing on the labels at the top of the screen. The results are stored on the instrument and can be viewed at any time using the display button on the main menu. You can also connect the instrument to the PC and download the data. A customizable Excel template is provided that can be used to generate a printable report. If you'd like to measure another sample, press the return button. This will bring you back to step one so the process can be repeated. Press the Sequoia button to return to the main menu. I hope this video provided a quick introduction to the procedure for making a measurement using the List Portable XR. Please look for other videos on, about the List Portable XR on our website at www.sequoiasci.com. Thank you very much.